Talking Memphis Wrestling with Randy Hill, featuring Michael St. John, Pat Tremble, and special guests. It's the 22nd day of November. It is Thanksgiving week. Can you believe it? Hello, everybody. Appreciate everybody that always is loyal, always checks in with us on Tuesday night, always watch Talking Memphis Wrestling. Our panel today will be the great Alabamian, Pat Trammell. The great Alabama, Mike said John, and the great, I don't even know where you can, you can say that he lives in Georgia now, but Adam Dunn will be producing this show and he'll hop in saying, what's going on? Well, what's going on with you? As I do this opening monologue, as I am waiting for people to come in and say hello and tell us who you are we have a few people in the room i see and i appreciate it very much but here goes the opening monologue for over 40 years i've hit the highways and byways of these united states of america all over the world and many all over the country in many, many different jobs. Tony Edwards, hello. What is going on? Glad you're here. We have a great show today. Panetta, our first lady of Talking Memphis Wrestling, she is in the house, and I appreciate that as well. So, for over 40 years, all around the Memphis territory and other jobs all around Tony Edwards, and I can say, up to Saturday, up to Saturday, I've never, ever been stranded on the road, ever, ever. Saturday in Memphis, I had car problems, transmission problems. I had to get the tow truck to come get me, and I rode with the tow truck back to Jonesboro. So I had to, to have my day in was great. That would have going to be my, my last trip of the day anyway. So that was okay. Then Sunday, couldn't drive, couldn't go out of the house. Thanks to Tony Bottom for bringing me a Thanksgiving feast. And I appreciate it. It's good to have good friends. And then yesterday, home all day long. But I called the head mechanic of where I go, and he was off yesterday. That's why I waited a day. I waited a day, and they said my transmission was gone. It was history. Boom. Big expense to replace it. Big expense to replace it. But I took a visit. Got a ride from my niece, Amy Richardson. And she took me out to Car Choice at Hilltop on Johnson and Jonesboro, Arkansas. And my guys were waiting for me. They knew I was coming. So they picked me up a car. The first picture I will show you right now as Adam will click on that that graphic there to get the picture on there. This is my new ride. The great people. Clay Brown, the GM. My sales guy. Love him to death. Vincent Hagler. They put me in this car. And there's another picture of me and Vincent together in front of Car Choice at Hilltop in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and there's me and Vincent, and he laughed at me because I do the pointing thing, and I always take the glasses off. I'm picky about photos, even though you guys might think I look ugly in that picture. Shame on you if I do. Absolutely shame if you think that, but I'm back on the road. I went right to driving. Love the car. It is a 2021, 2021, it's Hondu, Hondu, is that how to pronounce that, Adam? Am I right? Is it Hondu or Hande or how do you pronounce the thing? And what is it, a Sandra? Hyundai. A Sandra. Hyundai Sonata. A, a who? I think it's a Hyundai Sonata. 
Well, more power to you. I'm glad you figured it out. I'll be calling you every time I have to tell somebody what I drive. Tanner is in the house saying good evening. Panetta likes the car. Roger Calvert is in the house and want to bring in the first of the panel members. And I wanted him to see a picture of the car, the ride right there, and want to bring in from Alabama, his home is in Alabama, and drinking is forbidden, but it wasn't in his country Christian home, and it's certainly not in his home now. Welcome aboard. Hey, Pat. Good. Hello, everybody. Ahmad, Frank, Vanity, Tanner, Roger, Tony, everybody. And congratulations on your new wheels. Yay. I'm so excited. I'm so fired up. The very first trip, unless I get Uber rides tomorrow, the very first trip will be I'm double booked Thanksgiving Day. I go here in Jonesboro to my niece Amy's and we'll eat there. Then I will immediately get in the car and I will go to Cabot. And my niece Cindy's son, Jake, and his wife, Cassie, she will be hosting for the very first time. So I'm excited about that. Really like Cassie. And uh, obviously, Jake and Cindy and Benny and all that family. And, and so I'll be driving from about 4.30 to about 11.30 Thursday morning. And that is all. And Ahmad saying, that is a great car. So I hope you've had experience with it. I'm certainly excited for that. And Tanner says, so did the old car give up uh the help me what does that mean adam translate for what tanner's trying to say i don't get it <laughs> he's saying did the old car give up the ghost does that mean that, that it died on you yes it did it died a quick with no notice now pat you have good luck with cars i don't know how you do it maybe you drive like a grandpa and drive 55 miles on the interstate i don't know but how do you – and I do everything right, man. I do everything right. I get an oil change when I'm supposed to get an oil change a little bit before then. I do all the safety things. I have it for Uber being inspected, all that kind of stuff. I have good times. But we'll, before we let Pat tell us how he has such good luck with cars, I'll let Adam right now – Oh, because I got mad at Adam on the show last night because I thought he was jinxing me. And he, he said, well, it could be just bad. It just could be. It's history because because Nissans have a different type of transmission on it. And uh, it could be gone. And I kind of got mad. But damned if you weren't like. You're right, Adam. I'll be damned so explain that. I called it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so those... It's not just a Nissan thing, but those CVT transmissions, I just don't don't care for them. And that's the kind of transmission that was in that car. So, yeah, so to, to Tanner and to Ahmad, yeah, so the, the, the transmission in, in Randy's car blew up on it. And like Randy said, he does all the maintenance. You know, he gets three or four tires a month, whether it needs them or not. So he's, <laughs> he's taking good care of them. So, um, Tim says that that just means that you work too hard. It's why you're on the top Uber drivers in the nation. So, yeah. He put he put some miles on a car, but made sure this time with, with Randy getting that 2021 Hyundai Sonata, we got us a factory warranty to 100,000 miles on that car. So we should be good to yes. go. Yes, and so Adam advised me on doing that, and that was all taken care of. So let's throw it back to Pat. Here on this Tuesday Talk in Memphis Wrestling, and let's smarten up everybody because I'm sure everybody would like to learn from you and not me. How do you keep a car for 400,000 miles? Well, you know, at some point, the roll of the dice go to you. From the time I was 16 to 20, I had seven cars, mm -hmm. and they all just blew up on me. So I was due for some luck. But I do keep the oil changed. I'm, I'm religious about that. But other than that, I just drive. Plus, Randy, you got to understand, I drive a lot of highway miles which doesn't have a lot of stops and starts. So I'm, I'm probably, probably, that's probably the easiest driving you can do for long range, long range wear. So 
don't that's probably uh, don't that's, beat yourself up. That's probably why I didn't have all the years I was running the territory, I never had a lick of problems. That's but I probably was driving right. 2000 highway miles a week. And anyway, it's all a good deal, exciting deal. And, and I'm fired up and excited, and I'm excited and fired up about this show. And you know, I'm going to do something different. If you read the notes, you will see that, uh, and I didn't explain what it was, but what I, I said, we were going to have scheduled to have a Chris Ellis thought of the day. Chris Ellis will not be here today. He has a, a family issue to get his girlfriend with the doctor day, and now he's going to help her cook Thanksgiving meal tonight. Michael said John is not here yet, so that means Pat Trammell, anything. I don't care if it's Alabama football. I don't care if it's about Suzanne and Meg and Wyatt. I don't care if it's about your daily routine. I don't uh if you want to talk politics, don't go too crazy out there. If you want to talk about that that terrible shooting with those football players get got killed and our prayers are out to, to them in West Virginia. Pat Trammell, what's your thoughts of the day? Well, I don't I don't have a lot of thoughts. I think I told you your uh why it showed up from uh college in Memphis with uh their house dog and so he's trying to keep uh he's trying to introduce him to our dogs who who make a run in every now and then on the show particularly princess the female and i don't know how that's going i hadn't heard any barking lately hey uh, it, what's, going on, what's going on with auburn what's going on with auburn what's going on with auburn well i'll tell you exactly what's going on with auburn i want to know uh, all uh, right, this is exactly what's going on with Auburn University. I get up and get ready to go to work to uh, to keep my children in, in uh, the best schools I can absolutely afford. And the children's mother informs me that she and my daughter, who's a senior in high school, are going to Auburn University to tour the campus. So that that's what the hell's going on with Auburn in my house. I was throwing that at you because has it been officially announced or just and i'm throwing rumored? it right back huh is it rumored that now i was talking i didn't know any of that was going on i apologize if that's a sore subject but then I also, i'm just asking did they name a new football coach today no they didn't they have now, and i don't you know the rumor is it's going to be lane kiffin lane. Right. Uh, I don't. I don't think it is. Uh, I think he's going to stay at Ole Miss. I've got uh, Ole Miss contacts that believe he's going to stay at Ole Miss. Uh, Frank, my prediction for the Iron Bowl is: I think we will win by two touchdowns, but it won't be a blowout. If I were Auburn, I would. I would name Cadillac Williams the uh, the head coach because I've not seen. I've not seen as as uh, an Auburn team play with that much heart and guts and passion since Patrick Fain die left that program in the late 80s. Uh, I love watching those guys play. I love their passion. I love their excitement. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope they give that guy a real shot. Now we're going to give the producer of this show, Adam Dunn, the chance to push the button, get himself back on the screen. What's your thoughts for the day, Adam? Again, it doesn't have to be wrestling related. It can be TV related. It can be dog related. It can be radio station related. It can be oh, wife related, son or the other son. It can be anything related that you want to talk about. What's your thought of the day? Oh, gosh. Uh, so it's definitely not going to be anything football related because I don't know anything of what y'all were just talking about. Um, no, I'm um, proud of my, my oldest son today. They had their Christmas party at work and he's only been with them a very short amount of time. He's 19 years old and he got his uh, Christmas bonus from work today. And it was like a pretty good sum of, of money and they're happy with them and all that stuff. So I just Congratulations to him. He's he's going to head out tomorrow down to Sarasota Station. So he's going to ride ride it ride his motorcycle down there because down there right now I think it's like seventy five degrees. 
Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So congratulations to Colin doing great. He had, as happens in life, he had a little roadblock. He had had a accident and uh, we talked about that on the show, but he's back and he's doing good. And, and Adam has one at home full time now and, and uh, everything's going good. So wrestling business wise, uh, certainly we had a great time and a great success with the power pro show last night. Certainly uh, we've, I've sent links from uh Tales from the Territory to you, and I've sent links of other stuff, um, comments about a full gear. Any re- wrestling-related stuff in your mind? No, I said just work-wise, and I haven't really watched any any more of the Tales from the Territory stuff other than Memphis. Uh, full gear, I just uh, I haven't watched really anything on it. I did see the MJF interview with the media after that i know you're going to get deeper into that later just i think i did send you a little funny thing on that just basically where everything that's ever been done in wrestling it's either been done before or recycled and i think i shared you an old link of an old brian pillman interview that was a media thing that was for the time period pretty similar um but yeah i'm really loving these power shows most of the people that are watching this tonight they probably watch us on Monday night as well. But just in case you don't, on Monday nights, same location, same time, we do the Power Pro Wrestling Watch Along, and we're getting into about episode 40, 41. And if you missed last night's, we had Sean Stasiak over at Lawler's house uh, during the show. And next week, we'll have Rick Morton on, on the Power Hour. So it should be a good show coming up next Monday also. Now, you were working on this right before we went on the air, and I'm sure Pat might have sensed the fact we had chaos rushing to get online in time. There is a way to get all the archives, and it's the Randall Hales, Randall Hales YouTube channel. You were trying to get an easier URL, and I don't know if you had a chance to do that or not. I did not have a chance to, um, but yeah, I'm uh, right now on the, uh, the, we saw that graphic loaded. Yeah. So, so this graphic here, um, the, the, there is a classic Memphis wrestling YouTube, but Randy has his own YouTube channel and it's probably going to be Randy Hales. Memphis wrestling will probably end up being what, what we get. So we'll update this graphic when we have it. Uh, but just, of course, this one there has all of Randy's Facebook on the top, uh, including the Power Pro Wrestling Facebook, the Memphis Wrestling Hall of Fame Facebook. Uh, he's on Twitter at RB Hales. And Randy is uploading all the archives of this show on his YouTube channel. And as soon as we get a shorter URL for it, hopefully later today uh, or, to, or this week, we'll update this graphic and that pushed out on all of Randy's social. Now, right now, they can search for Randall Hales, R-A-N-D-A-L-L Hales, and they can find that. They can go to that page. Does right. that still work? Yes, it does. Uh, Randall Hales is the channel name, Tanner. We're just trying to get it to where it's like YouTube.com slash Randall Hales or something simple like that, or Randy Hales Memphis Wrestling, something. Well, we'll see. So we yeah, the one- name of, of the and I, I may have said that wrong, but yeah, the name, if you just search Randall Hales on YouTube, you'll find Randy's page that way also. And I would appreciate it if everybody, Pat, if you haven't subscribed to the Randall Hales YouTube channel, go ahead and do, and you can watch yourself back every, probably I have it up about 30 minutes after we go off the air. And that breaches the question about YouTube. So many people, now my friend Randy West watches youtube he he watches all kinds of things how to fix something so how to build something all kinds of stuff music stuff how much of a youtube how much of a youtube listener or watcher are you pat trammell i'm very much a big youtube watcher i watch a lot of history um I watch a lot of history on YouTube. Like like Randy, I, I look at how to do things a lot on YouTube. I look at how to cook things a lot on YouTube. You may not know this, but I'm a I'm a uh, 
I'm a borderline gourmet cook, as you can tell by my expanding waistline. But I I I love YouTube, and I I listen to I I, I listen to a lot of music on there too. Yeah, I like listening and to wrestling. You. And lots of wrestling, lots of wrestling. We opened with Pat by asking him his thought of the day, and that thought can be wrestling related. It can be television related, YouTube related, family related, Birmingham related, any kind of related as we welcome our great friend from the other side of Alabama from where Pat is. He's a legend in broadcasting. He is our friend and your friend, Michael St. John, that is going to say hello to us. Absolutely, Randy. Hello and welcome. Hi, Pat. How are you? Um, I'm great. First of all, Pat, in your honor, I had dinner last uh, Thursday, or excuse me, last Friday night at the Bright Star in Bessemer and sat in the Paul Bear Bryant Memorial booth where he used to sit. And the food was outstanding. The family still owns it. But unfortunately, uh, Arab in double overtime lost to Pleasant Grove in one of the best high school football games I've ever been uh, associated with. And as far as my first thought, Randy, my first thought is thank you. Thank you to everyone. We have a lot to be thankful for on Thanksgiving uh, coming up in a couple of days and less than 48 hours. And uh, uh, right now, all of my thoughts are about thanks and, and what I have to be thankful for, what we have to be thankful for as a, as a nation, as wrestling fans, as, as people. And uh, that's been my thought all day today. It's just a great time to give thanks. You know, as I want to call out Tony Edwards to saying hello to you and Podetta saying hello to you and Frank Seaton saying hello to you and Al Tuttle saying hello to you. <laughs> Everybody saying hello to Michael and Tanner and Al is in the house and he is uh, saying hello before Michael came in the room and we appreciate it. This show wouldn't be anything without this a community of people that come on every Monday and Tuesday night, this group of people, our friends that watch this show and contribute by asking questions. And it's, it's really good. As I mentioned it earlier in the thoughts of the day. And again, there's a, uh, here's a balance of what I want to do. I normally try to, to avoid politics as much as I can possibly do. However, it is also important for me to, to inform and also to entertain and also to keep everybody up with the, the, the news that's going around, not only Jonesboro, not only Georgia, not only Alabama, but all over the world and all over the, the country. And I uh, actually, uh, let's go full screen with me a little bit. Now I'm a I'm a football fan and there's no doubt about it. I'm a high school football and a high school basketball fan. I like seeing young people take that challenge in life and build themselves up and build the character up and 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 if they win, they go give it every uh, all hundred percent. But even uh, more important than that, if you lose, they're still out there fighting and risking their health to do that. It just comes a time, and, and uh, as again, I read an article today from CNN, and it was firsthand accounts and interviews from coaches and interviews from other people about that college shooting the other day, and of course, there was a a recent shooting in Colorado, and I haven't read a lot about that, so I don't have information. But listening to the coach and the former coach and the teammates and all that, and I saw a figure of how many mass shootings there have been in this uh, country this year. But I will start with Michael. Michael, have you read much or watched much videos? Because if that won't bring a tear to your eye, that incident of West Virginia with that football team, man, it, it just brought tears to my eye, Michael. Full oh, screen. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, the University of Virginia is a high academic institution, very much like Vanderbilt. And uh, the, their students are of a, of a different elk. 
in that uh, they they have some stringent w rules to get into that school, even though it is a state school. It's it's very highly uh, thought of, and you know I think it's sad. Uh, you know, not only with the shootings of of the players in Virginia, but the horrific shooting at the nightclub in in Denver, where people of a different persuasion. Uh, we're gathered and partying and having a good time and somebody comes in and starts shooting the place up. I've, I've also always thought the most horrific li uh, act in life of this is, is when somebody goes into somebody else's place of worship and, uh, and, and disturbs their, uh, their place of worship, no matter what their, their faith is. Uh, it, it makes me wonder, but it makes me sad that people don't have, the love and consideration of their fellow man that we were all put on this earth, in my opinion, to have and to share. And uh, it's very sad, Randy. I, you know, I'm a football fan from way back, as you know, and do games, do, do, do commentary on games, high school level before at the college level. Uh, it, it's just, it's, in, in this situation in Virginia, from what I'm reading, is turning out to be a, a player that was uh, thrown off the team, basically uh, had a, a, a bone to pick or an axe to grind or whatever cliche you want to use, and came back and used it with, with a gun on several of his teammates or ex-teammates. And, and apparently, I, Michael, let me interrupt real quick. The way I understand it by reading that article what she said is absolutely true he was he didn't have a long run a short run however none of the people that were killed none of the the football players that were killed so sadly ever played with him so it just seems to me it was a random random act of violence to get revenge from the football team period True. Not True. one individual or another. Is that how no, you understand it? Not. Yeah, that's how I understand it. It was up, up against the organization, if you would, of right. of the team. And I, I, I just, I, I point and I, and I've thought about this, and I don't want to throw rocks and throw stones. And I, I, I believe in the Second Amendment. I think it is one of the best written parts of our Constitution that that keeps us a free society. But to that extent, when the forefathers wrote the Constitution, they weren't envisioning AK-45, AK-15s, whatever they are, with unending man, uh, magazines of bullets and the, the high power of these rifles and these guns. Uh, I, and, and for whatever reason, if you're pro-gun, it's like, well, I'm pro-gun all the way pro-gun. Or if you're not pro-gun, then you're anti-everything. And, and I think there's a middle ground. I think there's a way that people can protect themselves uh, without having to have a, a tank in their backyard. And, uh, you know, that's not, the, that's not the reason these things are happening. That's not the cause. It is something to, to, that aids in the ability for people to, to go off the, the, the dark end and do it. Yes. But uh, it's not the reason. It's not the cause. It's not the... Uh, it's, it's not what you have to get to the root. I think the root of the problem is I think people have become so tough, tough skin, tough hearted, tough, whatever, uh, to where they don't have a consideration of love or at least of, of deep respect for their fellow man. Uh, color is no barrier. Uh, faith is no barrier. Language is no barrier. But I also think that in our country, we have had people in the political realm that have promoted violence and promoted these ideas and these thoughts on both sides of the aisle. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Whig, Independent, it doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, I, I think we're at a point in our society, and this brings up an interesting point, I don't want to go on forever because I know this isn't a political show, but... One of the things I've noticed, and Pat, you may want to chime in on this too, because I know you have kids in college, and I get to go to my my alma mater every week. Uh, yesterday I went because Thursday's a holiday, and I get to take my grand, my three year old, three and a half year old grandson, to the place where I went to college that formed a lot of my ideas and a lot of what I have become in life is because of what I did in college. And 
we walked the campus a few weeks ago. His dad, who's a police officer here in Huntsville, uh, was with me, and it was me he and his dad and Joshua. And after his his rehab, we I said, let's walk over to Rand Hall and grab us a bite. And it's a nice day. It was like the it's like a third week of October. Beautiful day. We walked the campus, you know. And this was in the middle of a school day at a very high profile SEC college. And Randy, you could bowl. You could bowl on those walkways and not hit any kids. And you could look into the windows of the of the the old uh, rooms that the, the lecture halls, and there were eight kids in the lecture hall that holds 200. And what has happened is our society has become so enamored and infatuated and hung on to these that, and by the way, that's Joshua with Paul Paul, but uh, it's, it's become, it, it's basically taking emotion out of everyday life and the interaction of people, i.e. the way you and me and Pat and coach and all of us grew up and Adam, whereas we always have had people around us and we interact with people and people are a big part of our lives. The, the kids coming up today or the young people coming up today and being educated today have been distanced, whether it be from a COVID pandemic, whether it be from uh, the, the digital age, whether it be from society in general, everything's done, uh, quote unquote, uh, online or uh, off, uh, off, what do they call it? Uh, Pat, help me out here with the, the uh, off, not offshore learning, but offsite learning. And I, I just think we're we're getting into a society that is becoming not tough from a standpoint of rough and tough, but just apathetic about people and emotion in general. Yeah, very good points, Pat. Do you want to follow up on those comments? Then we'll get into the wrestling stuff. We're talking Memphis wrestling with Adam Dunn, with Pat Trammell, with Michael St. John. I'm Randy Hales and... Happy Thanksgiving week, everybody. Pat, a follow-up on Michael's eloquent words. Well, it, it, it's very hard to, to follow Michael and, and intellectually or uh, as well as he expresses himself. But I, but I agree. And, you know, what, when, when you were talking about that, Michael, you know, I think I've said this on the show before. You know, I I, th I think the thing that hurts modern wrestling is nobody's riding the roads every night of the week, learning from the learning from the old guys. And you know, you, you used to sit at the feet of, of the masters, right? And whatever you did. And uh, Michael, I know you sat and listened to some of the great voices in radio, and some of the great voices in sports radio, and, and Randy. Um, you know, you were eight years old and learning from Eddie Marlowe. And and how does it get better than that? And the world's not that this way. We were talking about YouTube. Well, and I, I made a, a, a comment uh, about you mentioned Randy West, uh, you know, looking at YouTube videos to learn to cook. And I, I do that, too, and made some snide comment about my cooking skills. But, you know, most people who are great cooks, learn to cook from generations before them. And uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with you, Michael. I think the word that I would use in, in what we're missing in, in this modern society is community. Very good thoughts, and we appreciate that. It's almost time for Talking Memphis Wrestling Talk. We'll get into it, but we'll transition this way. Living the Dream, Memphis Wrestling, The Randy Hill Story, is available now at randyhillsmemphiswrestling.com. Let's answer this question real quick, and Tanner asking everybody what we, what type of food, what we're looking forward to eating on Thursday. Pat, we'll start with you. What we are, we're eating? It says, so what kind of food y'all looking for? to eat 
Thursday. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, I think I think I told you my 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 family goes to my wife's uncle's down in Clanton, Alabama, which is about an hour south of here in in uh, in the central part of the state, and it's a it is a four generation potluck traditional Thanksgiving. So anything with carbs and grease in it will have. Very good. That sounds good. Same thing with me, my friend Tony Bonham. When I was stranded at home with my car issues, he brought me a feast Sunday. I'm going to my niece Amy's house this Thursday at noon, then going to have Cabot, Arkansas Thursday. The, I'm a dressing guy. We're a smoked turkey family and all the bells and whistles, and I love it. Michael, what what's up with uh, the food you're looking forward to? Just quick answer here. We have a, a very close friend that lives over on Georgia Mountain, which is a remote area up here in North Alabama that smokes everything, literally. And um, he will smoke us a turkey and a smoked ham, which will melt in your mouth. And uh, Miss Melanie does all the fixings. So it's a traditional Thanksgiving uh, meal. And then after that, all the kids, not me, because I'm not a guy that likes turkey soup, but Melanie makes turkey soup. And from what I understand, it's one of the best around. Oh, that's fantastic, and you're big time looking forward to that. I want to go back to a Frank comment here as we put it up there. Randy, tell Michael, and when when I was, and, and now I had that up, and that Adam took it off, I guess, and now, okay, tell Michael about the 1972, and that's before my time. I was a 1980 graduate, about the state championship game in Hot Springs, Arkansas, with Jonesboro that went into three extra periods, the longest game in Arkansas high school football history to this day, uh, went into three extra uh, overtimes. And you know what the finish was, Michael? What's that? It was cold and it was crazy. It went Broadway. Oh, no wow. winner. It went. No winner. It's it went Broadway a hundred and ten percent. Now I wanted to speak to people. We get a lot of comments, and a lot of times we get it like say a a Pat monologue or a Brandy monologue or a Pat monologue or a Adam thing and. We actually have a direction that we hit that we're trying to go on this show, and we certainly encourage comments. But if we miss them, ask them again, because there's times where I miss the questions, and there's times where Adam's producing this uh, this show uh, for sure. Uh, now, Frank says, not, uh, not of, but come complete periods uh, was played until 11.30. It was uh, raining and uh, 36 degrees. It was tied at 14 degrees. Here we go with the wrestling talk. We'll start with Pat. Did you ever have a chance to watch Tales from the Territories last Tuesday night? If so, what did you think about the Portland episode? Well, uh, you know, I, I liked it very much. I, I um I have never seen anything about the Portland Territory, although I know a guy named Don Owens ran it. Um, but I always enjoyed listening to Lars Anderson. I think he's a, uh, I think he's a really bright guy and, and good to listen on wrestling. I didn't know he spent a lot of time up in that territory. Uh, I met him once. He was on the card at one of those little matches, uh, one of those little uh, – shows I promoted in high school and a very, very nice guy. Uh, I, don't remember, I thought it was interesting. I did too, but I don't remember Lars being on there. I really don't. I remembered him being on the Hawaii show. but I, remember, I, I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got confused. Lynn yes, Denton. I saw the port. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I got confused. Lynn Denton from the Grapplers was yes. awesome. Princess Victoria was on. Mike Masters, who passed away after this was recorded, he passed away of throat cancer. Uh, and certainly uh, Luke Williams of the Sheep Herders of the Bushwhackers. Uh, they talked about Buddy Rose. 
Matt Bourne, Roddy Pfeiffer, just a lot of stuff. I thought it was fascinating, and I enjoyed it. Michael, your thoughts? Um, I'm going to confess, I did not get to watch it. I will watch one of the replays, and I think tonight is about the w, uh, WCCW, and yeah. uh, I am planning on watching that, but after our show last week, I just got busy, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it, But uh, and it was a busy week with the playoff game and everything, so I will catch up on it tonight. I think it's very much watch. I didn't know a lot about Portland. Uh, again, you think, because maybe I'm suspicious of the fact that I know wrestlers and wrestling business people because I'm one of them, and we tend to, to a good good story, man, is a good story no matter how you have to, to embellish. Tanner says uh, his friend Robert Fisk uh, used to work in Portland wrestling, uh, and Michael says, uh, what is Frank is, uh, saying, uh, putting over oh, the cat, on. the, the cat the is, cat's on. is in the house. There's no She's doubt, all about it. doubt about it. I think you will enjoy that very, very much. So now all I'm asking is for a yes or no right now, before we get into the subject, I kind of have to know your answer to this thing and i'll ask adam this too uh even though i know the answer because he told me but still i want to talk of, uh, about the uh, certainly the subject that i'm going to talk about is cussing and wrestling and profanities and wrestling here's a yes or no question i sent a videotape of mjf's media scrum using the F word and the GD word and every type of word you can think of. Yes or no, Michael, did you have a chance to watch that link that I sent you of that, that deal? No, I'm sorry. I, in fact, I've got to go back and look at the link. I'll find it right now. Pat, how about you? I, I didn't get it. No. Adam, just curious. I believe you said you did watch it, correct? Yes. So we'll go first impressions um, with you, Michael. I mean, Adam, since you did see the thing. Here's the thing that I, I think. This is the Southern Christian upbringing. Up, I, I can't tell you, but I'm telling you, I don't care if it's YouTube. I don't care if it's a media scrum. I don't care what it is, a wrestler or anybody else saying the word GD, there's never ever a place for it and now it's got to the, the fact that back in the good old days maybe one or two dams a year would help build whatever you're feeling feeling now they cuss so darn much uh it's just part of it it's just part of it so watching that back that media scrum did you see an absolute, how much did the F word and the GD word and all that add to that media scrum? I mean, I understand, I guess, what they're trying to do with that. And I agree. I, I don't care if it's subscription service or I don't want to hear GD. I really don't think it's... Uh, it, it adds much and you know just in my opinion uh mjf is such a talented performer or wrestler we're gonna call him anyway it's just he it, don't it's really need not it. necessary i mean no he right he, he doesn't need, need it. it i'll let that's exactly right and i wanted your perspective since you saw it and I, I just didn't want me being the old grumpy guy pat speaking of old grumpy guys right. Do you think profanities <laughs> absolutely a hundred percent being over overused and it's insulting? Well, I, I agree, but you know, we I, I remember, and this is this is kind of funny. Um, the one of the greatest angles ever, and I've I've mentioned this a lot, was when Dusty uh, only turned on Dusty in the cage. And uh, at the end of, of the promo, Dusty Cut in the in the locker room, he said, "Payback, payback is hell, Daddy." 
and that was cursing at the time. And so every kid in high school went around for the entire year when they had phrases, you know, senior phrases in the, in our yearbook. It was payback was H stash LL because everybody said that. But it you weren't desensitized to those kinds of things then. So if it was a really really hot angle, it was for big effect. But you know, if it, it, I mean, it's uh, Tanner. I think you said it, and I, I didn't get your uh, your 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 uh, your comment is is off my screen right now. But it's just, it's cheap. It's just cheap, and it's and you know, my my mother would say you're showing a lack of intelligence when you have to use those words. And you know, occasionally for effect, yes. But I agree with you, Ahmad. I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't. I don't believe you should ever use GD. Just like you shouldn't use Allah D or you know uh, Muhammad D or whatever. As we get ready to go and get Michael's comments, a thought came to my mind because on Memphis TV, which was Saturday morning, it was on Channel Thirteen. It was eleven to twelve thirty in the morning, and Gorgeous George Jr. was doing a promo when he was doing a fired up pro promo and just aware i'm not going to say the f word or the gd word and i've tried lately because at one point i'm thinking man cornet does so oh, so well and he's volatile and i would throw the f word in never again on this show however i will say a, a short little word in a minute to get across how the times have changed. It was unscripted. He just in the heat of the moment, gorgeous George Jr. said, all Bill Dundee is is a little chicken shit. Lance Russell took that microphone, put it under his armpit, covered up the microphone, and then the management of the television station told the wrestling company told jerry jarrett never again on this television show never again now we can say the f word the gd word and any word we want to michael your thoughts on profanity and just personal experience you've done live tv and certainly live radio and i've probably asked this question before in the heat of the battle in a football game, the state championship is at stake, and you're a vested interest in the thing, and they they uh, they fumble, your team fumbles the ball. Did it ever come out? Because you're thinking it in your mind, but did you ever say S-H-I-T? Has anything like that happened to you on a live program? Then your opinion of what we're talking about right now. Here's Michael St. John. Well, to answer your first question, uh, not in the heat of the battle, but yes, when something went wrong technically, and I thought we were off the air. Um, I, I'm a prolific cusser in four or five languages, and <laughs> uh, and 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 uh, and off screen and off air, and and my staffs at Kicks 104 and Y 107 and Y 95 and in St. Louis can and can tell you, and in Phoenix can tell you that. Uh, uh, I can go on some tirades sometimes, and I normally I'm uh, the best way to explain me is the way my wife explains me, which is I'm a Roman candle. When I get mad, I'm a Roman candle, and I go off, and the the colorful words come flying, and then they die out, of course, because a Roman candle dies out. So I'm the same way. Uh, but on the air, no, because I'm I've I'm engraved, I'm ingrained with the seven words you can't say on television and that's just um, the minimalistic there's probably 15 or 16 that you can't really get away with and in this day and time i mean part of what's brought this on and i don't mean to be on a digital media kick tonight but part of it is the digital media twitter facebook that i call something else by the way that starts with an f uh instagram tiki tock whatever the the thing is that's hot right now Profanity is part of the language of it. And and I think, again, what it's done is it's numbed our senses, or at least the senses of the people that are using it in those arenas, 
to where it doesn't matter. So when it, uh, they see it on TBS, which is a cable station, which is why they get away with it versus the FCC, because cable TV, as far as content, is not under the same guidance and rules that over the air television or radio is, and they get away with it. So, you know, does it disturb me? Yeah, yeah, it does, because just like you said, Randy, MJF or any other star in this business should have more class than that. You know, one of the best quotes I ever heard is a Bear Bryant quote. And Coach Bryant used to tell his players, show your class, not your ass. And I think that is a classic, uh, a great thing we ought to live by now, whether it's pro wrestling, pro anything, sports, high school, the media, the internet, whatever. And if you do that, then you don't have to worry about it. But to answer your question, no, I've I've never lied a, a one go knowingly or accidentally. But when the, I thought the mic was off, there's been a couple of times that some people have heard something that I'd rather not them hear. Tanner is having great talks and somebody asked if we had the delay button. We never, we certainly don't on this show. And in, at Channel 5, I don't remember a delay button. And, um, you know, I just can't answer that question of, like from our level. And I think Raw certainly has the delay situation there. And, and Randy, uh, actually at Channel 5, uh, on the on the live show, there was a, if I'm not mistaken, there was like a 30 second or not 30 second, but a three second dump, they call it. From the, the, the time that a word is muttered, the director or the producer in the truck or in the studio upstairs could have had a dump button and he'd hit that dump button and it would kill that audio for like three seconds and then bring it back. But I have worked, I know when we were doing the Dallas tapings for ESPN, there was a dump button that if a wrestler got or somebody got hot and one of those words slipped, you would never hear it on the air because the dump button would be hit. Yeah, I was up in that control room thousands of times and had uh, in several different inst instances. So if they had a dump bunk button, it wasn't working because it got off over the air without a doubt. And I, again, ever, on any show I ever produced, I was up in that control room and never knew. But honestly, most of the time, it didn't have to be used because most people had enough sense not to cuss. I mean, you just didn't. Maybe uh, a, a dam here or there uh, or hell here or there. But to say that, they, they would always ask if they could do that. And mm -hmm. uh, certainly, um, it, it's just different times uh, in in uh, life and uh pat uh rose just make a a uh and i really he just says country music camden knows that camden did, uh camden knows that but i don't know i really don't know what he's re responding to does anybody know what pat's responding to guys no i have no idea i know there's I been some country songs that have had some questionable lyrics at, at times but Con I mean, conway twitty is the is the uh most pornographic singer in history <laughs> i know what you're saying pat <laughs> lay you down and softly whisper pretty love words in your ear lay you down and tell you all the things that a woman likes to hear. Yeah, then that I wasn't allowed to listen to those songs by my parents. Absolutely not allowed to do that. So, Randy, let me insert something real quick here on the, the pregame music. Have you been to a high school football game? And I know you go at times, uh, uh, Randy, yeah. I, don't, and I guess Pat, you go too, where they're playing the pregame warm up music, where they're yes. playing it real loud. Okay. Yes. Have you ever listened to some of the lyrics that they're playing these songs for these kids to warm up to? Yes. Yeah. I have. And as a matter of fact, my nephew's dad just goes crazy before that and say, how do they, they get away with that? Just how do they just blows his absolute mind every, 
every time. By the way, a little chat out from to the Valley View Blazers. They got further along in the playoffs. They had a heartbreaker of a loss, 26 to 21, against a very good Camden Fairview team. Man, we had had a uh, double digit lead and just couldn't keep it. I think the weather, which affected both teams, and it affected us. A fumble, we lost. Uh, lost control. They ran it back, and, and so we lost. But Valley View, the Blazers, like the flame, you did a great, great job. Now, um, did anybody, any member of the panel, have to have the chance to watch the AEW Full Gear pay per view? Michael, did you get a chance to watch it? Not in full, but I've seen quite a few of the highlights and quite a few. Of, and I've seen a couple of matches that were on, uh, uh, that are on YouTube and, and, uh, you know, MJF, they put the belt on MJF, but Moxley apparently, uh, apparently I hate to say this and, and because I like having multiple wrestling companies in competition, but AEW in my opinion right now is an absolute dumpster fire. I mean, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but on the on the shows, the shows are just putrid. You know, we used to have bad shows. Here's what I say: I don't think you can say a bite. So that it's a total dumpster of fire when you're coming off a live event that they drew a, a million dollars. The fourth pay per view in a row with their live event was a million dollars. That they did a hundred and forty. Uh, thousand buys which results in seven million dollars which is split with the pay-per-view company certainly uh if it's not our type of wrestling and a lot of it's not and i'll run through this in a little bit it's not ours but if you don't if you're wrong everybody's wrong if you a hundred percent on a lot of this stuff you'll hear me knock it but at the same time if there's a million people that that's the sort of stuff they like, that's the sort of the stuff they like. And if 140,000 people, when what was TNA's best pay-per-view ever, 16,000, 8,000, whatever it was, if it, you're just wrong if you think there's not an audience. They're wrong if they think that they'll ever get one one new customer, uh, a new mass audience doing that kind of stuff. It's not for the masses, absolutely. And it's absolutely not for the older generation and the older wrestling fans for the most part, for the most part. But unless you're going crazy with their pay and their expensive and that sort of uh, thing, there's a lot of excitement to the product, and we'll put up a couple of the full gear graphics that I will go over this card and give my opinion on this for sure. The opening match of the night was a cage match. Some people have questions about the setup, the lineup, the order of the thing, however, Here's my deal. They had a buy-in thing, and they had three matches on the free show. It should have been all packages because after three matches and there's no limit, they fight out of the floor. They go to tables. All that is crazy. You're burning out your live event crowd, and then that makes the people not energized enough. That was the first mistake they made. The match going on first, the cage match, Jungle Jack, now they're calling Jungle Boy. Now they're calling him Jungle Boy Jack Perry, which I like, against his former tag team partner, Lucasaurus. I thought it was my favorite match of the night. I thought it was absolutely sensational. The right finish, it made sense. No silly stuff whatsoever in my eyes. And they got juice. And it was great. And it was a baby face selling the heel cheating. My type of match. And it was a good opening match. Great opening match. Now, 
either you love this sort of thing or hate this sort of thing and i won't spend much time on this this won't be a cornet rant because i'm staying away from the cussing but if there's ever a a opportunity to justifiably cuss is watching this match not my type of thing at all the death triangle pock and he's called the b-a-s-t-a-r-d pock i don't like that either ray phoenix and penta l zero medio wow, who in the world can get over with that name first of all penta l zero Video. I know people are in Lucha Libra. I was never into it. No psychology. And some people think the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, some of the best wrestlers there's ever been, that they're great. This was horrible. Awful. You can't keep up with it. It was a dance routine. It was phony. There wasn't near nothing real about it. Nothing physical about it. The rules wouldn't enforced. It was horrifying. It was horrible. And Dave Meltzer gave it a six-star match. And six stars don't mean crap, people. That's the type of things he likes. Again, for the if you like that sort of thing, and I don't know how you could like that sort of thing, it was awful. You can't keep up with it. There's no psychology. It's an embarrassment to the wrestling business. But if you like it, it's your right to like it. I'm telling you that right now. I'm not going to think one down thing about you, folks, if you don't like that match. I thought it was horrible. I think it was a dud. I think it was not exciting. I think in traditional wrestling, if they did that, they wouldn't have left. I'm not going to say they would have not have left the dressing room alive because then – I think there's a chance some old old timers might have stuck an eye in them. I mean, there's a small chance. I'm not saying they deserve that, but back in those days, especially, uh, it wouldn't have happened, and the boys would have taken it on their own. Then, as I'm getting blowed up because I'm trying to do this quick, Jade Cargill and Nyla Rose didn't do much for me. The ROH title match. With Jericho, Brian Danielson, Claudio, and Sammy Guevara, a four-way match. I thought it was fantastic. I think it's tied for my second. The cage match, number one, that uh, certainly. And there's some people, including on this panel, one of them's not there, that don't like Jericho. But you listen to Bully Ray, doesn't, uh, doesn't support AEW. Of course, my, Mark Henry does. Most wrestling experts saying Chris Jericho is doing the work of his life and one of the MVPs of AEW. I don't know if I go that far and say that he's one of the uh, MVP. He wouldn't be the number one MVP because that person in my mind would be MV, would be uh, our guy, M Maxwell, the new AWA, AEW world champion i love that match it was exciting it was great i told pat that saturday i wouldn't go and order it but sunday i was bored i was stuck without a car my car died so i did reach out and watch it and i enjoyed a lot of stuff on this this card the former page and dr brett baker pretty good kind of surprised they put page over pretty good then hob and ward Low and Samoa Joe, that was pretty good as well because I have a personal stake to this thing. The Jeff Jarrett, Jay Leth Lethal, Sting, and Darby Allen match was good, uh, real good. I enjoyed that. Tony Storm and Janie Hater, I hated it. The acclaim against Swerve and Glory, it was good, but it wasn't as good as their first match or their second match. And then I thought Moxley and MJF, the finish with Steve Regal throwing in the brass knucks, I thought that was uh, brilliant. And I thought, in general, it was a thumbs-up show and a very, very, very good show. So somebody else talk now uh, to respond to that because I'm blowed up. 
was uh was the uh that that clip you and adam sent me and sent michael was that from that show i said so so much but i sent a mockery uh deal and adam will get your comments on on here i don't know if you saw the thing it was set the music about the death triangle match uh with uh with the bucks and oh Omega, Adam, did you have a chance to watch that video? Now it would that makes it even worse watching that match. And Adam said he didn't see it either. So now I gotta uh, pretty much know that nobody watches the stuff I see it, seeing it, so I won't see it anymore. I won't send it anymore. Anyway, no, um, I watched it. I watched it. That's what I told you. It looked like two two uh, ferrets running around the laundry room. Embarrassing, terrible. I watched, I watched that, and, and yeah. I thought it was a circus act. Awful. I, I didn't think it was wrestling. I just thought it was a circus. It's act. not wrestling. I'm not arguing with you about that, and I'm saying that that I was offended watching that match. I would love to hear from the other side, and a lot of times I do that. I take the other other side, and I'm always trying to be fair. And I would love for somebody to speak up right now. For for sure, and well, Vanetta says she likes the Randy's route. I would love to hear somebody say because I won't call you dumb or stupid or anything like that. Because folks, you have the right to think whatever you want, like what you like, don't like what you like. I like country music. I, I our taste and everything are different. I get that. I get that. But I don't see any way. That anybody, period, the young kids today, the fast food society and the remote society and all that, I can see a, a five to a 12 year old liking that and think it's exciting. I can see that. But any adult with any sense, I don't see it. I think it's awful. I think it stinks. It stinks. I, and certainly I'll quote. Somebody is it stinks, it stinks, it stinks, it stinks, it stinks. It's awful. It is absolutely awful, Michael. <laughs> I like your rants. Um, I have a question for all of the panel, and that is I have of the opinion that a lot of what we're seeing on the AEW shows are individuals that are controlling their own destiny and their own program and their own verbiage and their own actions in the ring. And you can't please everybody in anything. And I just don't think that there's a person within that company that has the power to control the boys or the girls. And I think, uh, you know, Tony's so sold on this. Well, we're giving them creative freedom. Let me tell you what creative freedom will do. Creative freedom will put your ass out of business quicker than anything on the face of the earth in not any if, business. Not if in, you have billions of dollars. Hey, this is a toy for him, Michael. It's a toy that's for That's a good him. point. I was getting around to that. Okay. He's a, he's, a, he's a rich kid, and this is his erector set. Now, what did I say earlier? And I say this. Dave Meltzer is a bad, bad, bad influence of a lot of people. I, I, I mean, because he had success with the Wrestling Observer, and he liked more than anything else a work rate, which I never heard that technology in my life back in the day, uh, and the strong style and the high spot matches and all that. Tony Khan was a reader of the Wrestling Observer, and Tony Khan is basing his wrestling booking on, absolutely on, what he likes. And in a way, I did that. I like Memphis wrestling, but the thing was, I was running a Memphis wrestling company, so it made sense for me to run Memphis wrestling like Memphis wrestling. It made sense. Try to evolve with the times and, and all the things. But what I'm saying is that Tony, uh, you know, I said this on this 
show that he went in a publication and absolutely said, wait till I see what see what I have for the rest of the year. I'm going to win that Wrestling Observer Booker of the Year award for the third time. Now, what do you think that Jerry Jarrett would rather have, Randy Hales would rather have, Bill Dundee would rather have, Jerry Lawler would rather have, Dusty Rhodes would ever have, Ole Anderson would rather have, Michael's uh, Vince McMahon Jr. ever have any bookers worth their salt at all. Do you think they would rather have a six-star match or a sellout crowd and the people believe in the program? That's the easy question. Exactly. And that's, that's, it, it goes without answering because the obvious answer is you want the booking. I mean, you want the, the crowd, you want to sell your product. And, uh, you know, first of all, and, and forgive me for saying this, but I think Tony is a goof in the business. And if he'd have come in the locker room in Memphis, when, when you and I were doing the shows, Randy and, walked in there and started talking to the boys 99 out of a hundred of the boys would say he's a goof. And I think he's a goof with a lot of money. And I think the money is what's keeping the, the show on the road or on the air. And the money's not going to dry up, but do you think at some point Tony is going to have to answer to his dad who, by the way, they have a whole bunch of money tied up in the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Jacksonville Jaguars are the 32nd worst franchise in the national football league. Can't go any lower than that unless you become Mississippi. So, you know, the money you can only, he's going to use the money as because it's there and he's going to put his product on because it's a toy to him. It's his erector set. And, uh, Unfortunately, he has an outlet with television with Turner and or not with Turner, but uh, with Warner Brothers now and and TBS. And sooner or later, I think TBS is going to get wise to when the show goes on, the ratings go down. And if it's a product where they're just sticking in a program to have program and they don't care about the the opportunity to make money on it, they'll probably live with it longer than if it's in a slot where they know that they can make money doing something else even if it's running reruns of friends. So well, I, I think that's going to be the ultimate litmus test. And when you look at it, their numbers uh, compared to the rest of, of, of cable and all, all that have been successful in everything that I, I read from the media reports and that sort of thing is that, is that TBS and TNT has been very happy with the numbers for sure. By the way, I don't think Tony Khan's a goof. I don't think he's a goof at all. I've met the guy. I've talked to guy, the guy on, on the the phone. Uh, I think he might uh, be ca- caffeined up or or worse. I think that might be the uh, the f- fact. I, I think certainly his problem is that. He, honest to God, through brainwashing and different uh, things, wanted this business so so much. He's uh, he goes out there and deal with the people in the NFL and the Canadian Football League and all that. You almost sound like Cornette and Brian Last on that thing. I've talked in intelligent. I think he's a nice guy, a super nice guy. I do not think he's a goof. I do think that this ain't the business for him. I think he should not be running the business. I think he needs to hire professionals with experience, uh, certainly, uh, and let them sink or swim. I honestly don't think he uh, should be uh, booking that. I think he handled the the punk late thing horrible. Uh, I think he's made bad television thing. And I think a rookie in this business, his first act in this business was to, to write a national wrestling television uh, show. I think that's all wrong. I think it's all wrong. Totally. But do I think he looks goofy? Yes, I do. Do I think he's a goof? Absolutely. A hundred percent. By meeting him and talking to him, I 100% disagree with that. I just think right now he's not doing a good job 
and he's not the person to, that should be booking that thing. But to say he's a goof, I don't think he is. Well, I'll say this. Their football team is. Uh, you know, <laughs> have you watched the Jaguars lately? I yes. mean, uh, I, I, and when I say that, I, you know, I've not met the guy. You have the advantage of meeting the guy. He may be the nicest guy in the world. I might really like him when I meet, meet him. But I'm just talking about what I see from the outside looking in. And, uh, and, and I can't, I can't get any respect there. Let me ask a question. And that is the NWA and Billy Corrigan. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. And, uh, they just put the title on uh, Tyrus, the guy that looks like the Tyrannosaurus Rex, yes. uh, uh, Titus, whatever his name is, uh, who's made a lot of money giving, uh, financial advice on television, who is not Cyrus. His name Cyrus. is Cyrus. Yes. Yeah. But, but they just put the title on him and it, you know, and I know that NWA belt over the past 30, 35 years has not been what it once was no, after no. Flair was gone. But at the same time, there's a lot of history to that as the oldest championship belt in the world. And, uh, I I'm just wondering, you know, as all I know is the only place I've ever seen, and you mentioned YouTube earlier tonight, Randy, the only place I've ever seen the NWA show is on YouTube. Although somebody told me it's on fight TV. Yeah. I just don't have the uh, time to, I guess, watch it on fight me TV, neither. but I, it's just all of a sudden, it just seems like the NWA will get, you know, a few blurbs of, of press and then we'll literally go into the hibernation for the winter or whatever. And I just, I, I just can't. And I understand it's taped in Nashville over in the old Sam's club location off Dickerson road. And I just, I don't know. I, I have no idea what's happening there. Does anybody, you know, apparently, apparently Nick Aldis gave, here's another thing. First of all, Nick Aldis gave his uh, notice. And then once he gave his notice, it says that after January the 1st, he was not going uh, to renew his contract, which he had the right to do. Well, that made Billy Corgan mad because Nick at the same time said, well, I don't like the way things are running, blah, blah, blah. So Corgan made the decision, well, we don't need you to come to the next pay-per-view. Well, I understand that thinking. I understand where Corgan, because you don't want somebody in your cancer in your dressing room. So if he is not going to be there anyway, I get it. I absolutely get it. But here's another thing that Corgan doesn't have as much money near as, as the cons do. However, he is a hundred percent convinced. He has all the, the uh, answers and I can't, I can't say any more than I don't understand the whole thing. I just know that was a public breakup that makes that company look bad, for sure. And uh, another thing, and, and Pat's our expert on the NWA, the current product, because he's the only one of us that's gone there. But I think I'll, I'll go with Adam first, because he's popped in, and he has the passion on this. And I don't know where this will go now, but we'll let Adam uh, give his hot take on the matter. Okay. No, just I would say that the end up is probably one of my biggest disappointments. I was very excited when I heard that it was coming back. I was excited when I heard it was going to be wrestling. Uh, because I think as everybody on the panel here and everybody watching knows, that is what I'm passionate about. It's I it's live studio wrestling, 110% is what I'm all about. And so when I heard that that was coming back, I was really excited. I watched uh, a few episodes and very quickly, which is what happens a lot to me when I uh, kind of gone to kind of what I'm hoping to get out of it. It's very evident to me that they uh, did not know how to format a television. And especially when you're talking about studio wrestling, that's the whole thing about it. It's a television show. And especially for us that grew up in, in Memphis and some of the other territories as well, it's a live show. And there's certainly no reason why it couldn't be live, whether it's on YouTube or Fight or whatever. But just like we talk about on the Power Pro shows, and I think, Randy, you mentioned you was watching a, uh, 
uh, something with Eric Bischoff, and you said he said format a hundred times on there. There is a flow and a format to doing television wrestling, and I was hoping to see that with WA. And just from what I watched, just yet again, it was something that was just kind of haphazardly, choppily, and just didn't have the flow of just how a studio show sh- should go. So out of everything that's currently going on right now, NWA was probably my biggest letdown and biggest disappointment and biggest missed opportunity for what it could have been. Did Michael go away? He did. I don't know what happened there. Michael did go away. Hopefully he'll he'll, he'll come back, but he did drop off. He probably so just I, didn't want to hear what I had to say. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, you don't think Michael likes you anyway. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Pat, your thoughts on on the uh, your thoughts on the NWA? Well, um, you know, first when when we're when we're talking about wrestling, whether it's good or bad, um, you know, it you know, I I, I don't want us to focus on how much money they're drawing because I know I know that is I know that is important to the to to the promotion and that's how you ultimately measure success but it's all about kind of what we like and it, you know it I, we think memphis wrestling from 1977 to 2002 was the pinnacle of wrestling so when when i when i think about it and i see you know maybe we're maybe we're old goats but you know, we like what we like. You know, older people like classical music, which is a lot better as an art form than, than what I listen to. But as it relates to the NWA, I I can only uh, I think Adam said it as big as I did. If he was most if he was most um, disappointed, I was second most. Um, I've got kind of a relationship with Aldous. Um, I paid him for some training tips, and uh, we kind of communicated a couple of times. Um, I think that he thinks that Billy never committed long term to what a classic wrestling thing was. And what I would say is this, and Adam, I'd be curious to to see what you might say. I thought they had... I thought they could play the notes of an episodic wrestling show, but they couldn't turn it into music. And they could get them yeah. out, and those guys could do promos, but you never had a storyline. Right. You you never had storylines that lasted over three weeks. You, you've got to remember Lawler and Dundee fought for years. Well, you know, you know, that and not only, I mean, what was Memphis and it went wrestling up and so down long? And around and over right. and all that, yeah. Right. Well, the whole thing was, I mean, how long did Lawler chase the championship? How long was that the ongoing thing before it ever happened in, in 88? I mean, you had 10 years of Lawler going after a world title. So, yeah. No, that's what I mean when I say it's just missed opportunity because there's so much stuff built into that that makes it okay to be a small company. You know, if if you're doing studio wrestling and there's a hundred people in the audience, it can look full. You can work with that, you know, and just when they did it at, at, uh, in Atlanta, you know, they, it was almost like it was on a soundstage. You had like, like the big bleachers going up or whatever, but even that was fine. But just like you said, it's just, it's like you'd get an element of it over here for about two minutes and then they'd lose it. And- next segment or just a you know again being a television show being studio wrestling you're supposed to just at least shoot it live to tape or something you know and just kind of have that flow from segment to segment to segment and it just wasn't there and like you said it's just um i think a lot of this too can be just the downfall of taping something you know if you take four or five episodes all at once you'll kind of have that strong direction for a few weeks and then the next time you do tapings, if somebody's not there, now you've got four or five episodes of not having, and it just makes it for a you know just kind of a weird situation. But like I said, just to me, 
a lot of missed opportunity there, especially when you can go on YouTube and you've got 20 years of blueprint of how to do it. So I just, I don't understand. It's just, I guess, someone that just doesn't understand that when you do it like that, it's a television show about wrestling. It's not a wrestling show that you just put on television. I always turned on wrestling because I wanted to know what would happen next week, and I wanted to know what happened Monday night, and I wanted to know what happened Sunday night at the Omni, and I wanted to know how that how that would go over, and and you know did 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 Lawler get the belt? I mean, you know, it's it's in it's an it's Jerry Jarrett's term, it's Shakespeare for the masses. It's not it's a soap opera. If it's done right, it's the best soap opera ever written. And they just never got it there. They just never got it there. And Al, you're right. That was the old center stage. Yeah. For a period of time. And then they went to Georgia Public TV. It's got to be episodic. It's got to be a week from week type thing. And, okay, so Michael says that he lost power and he's on backup generator. So that's why we lost Michael. So I guess I didn't run him off. But so, so hopefully he'll he'll be back. But yeah, it's got you know it's just you know you look at just the formula of what Memphis wrestling was, and it's just one of those things to where I just they don't understand what made studio wrestling great. It wasn't just the fact that it was just in the studio; it was just you know, how it was laid out. Like you said, I mean it was you know, Monday night you'd get the results, and you know, even back in the day, Jack Eaton would give the Monday night results on the 10 o'clock news. It was, just, it was a whole different feel, a whole different deal uh, just compared. Just now, th- now the NWA just looks like a, it looks like a failed big promotion that got reduced down to what they're doing, not where they could have just started organically from being a studio thing and let it grow. You know, having these the big pay-per-views and stuff like that, it just kind of seems weird and, and out of place based based on where they're at but it looks like at, at, at its worst it looked like a caricature caricature of wrestling but I, i'll yes. say this about the talent and and you know i think trevor murdoch can work the bet one of the best wrestling matches i have ever seen was nick aldis and cody rose when when aldis took the belt off of him before he went to AEW. so you know you could find you could find the talent uh, they just didn't know how to put it all. You know, they could play the they could play the notes. They just couldn't play the music. Good point there, and I want to reference Tanner. Tanner, once we announced that Michael was on generator power and went away, then Tanner says, "Uh oh, we've lost Randy too." You didn't lose me because Adam realizes as he's directing this show. First of all, when somebody's doing a monologue, whether it's me, whether it's Michael, whether it's Pat, we like to go single shot. And and Adam knows when I'm not talking, I don't like to be on screen because I like dipping. And that's what I was doing. So that's where I went. So what kind of weather do you have going on uh, in Arab, Alabama that would cause you to lose your electricity, that would cause you to be able to – to quote Steve Austin, leave this award-winning show that's never won any awards. What caused all that stuff? It's called AEC, Arab Electric Cooperative. <laughs> but uh, no, we had a, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's not that cold tonight. It has been, but uh, we had a little brownout. And I'm on, I, I have generator down here on the on the studio. And um, my battery backup started beeping, and I looked down, and I had 2% of juice left. So it went dark, and then I had to go upstairs and flip the switch to turn the generator on. But now we're back on. Actually, I'm not on back on uh, generator power now. I'm back up on AEC. Boy, those call letters, AE, must have a problem with them. But anyway, uh, I'm back uh, I'm back full full force. Now, we will give you the opportunity, since you left us high and dry, it was no fault of your own, but you broached the NWA subject, then my, I, I knew Adam would rant, rant for that, and I knew Pat would also rant and have his opinion, and I just don't have any interest at all. I thought their discussion 
was interested as well. So what's your thought on the NWA and Aldis and Billy and all this mess? I think they're, I I think they're more of a wrestling organization to the letter of the law than AEW. And, uh, and I think, you know, you've got impact out there floating around and uh, I don't watch new Japan. I no offense, but I just, I can't get into Lucha Libra and I can't get into new Japan. So I don't watch that, but you know, I, I think that if AEW, if the if the money and the financial backing of AEW was sixty percent of what it is, and it NWA and and Impact had it, I think there's room for all four companies, and I think all four companies would, you know, uh, at least put a lot of boys to work, and I think we'd have a good selection of what to watch in wrestling, but. Uh, it, it enamors me that the, the, I've always loved the NWA. I grew up as an NWA fan. I got to lunch and dine and, and visit with Sam Munchnik before he died and learned a lot. I mean, it was like, it was like going to a history book lesson and, uh, and I've had a lot of respect for it, but it just, and I love to me, the symbol of the world heavyweight championship is that NWA, I think they call it the globe belt that Harley had and has been around long before that. And I think when you see that, I think there's a certain prestige and a certain aura that goes with that, a certain respect. And I just sort of feel like it's it's basically all it is is a, a YouTube channel. Now, Al Tuttle has said something that Adam Dunn has said several times. He's even buzzed me about doing it said randy needs to book the nwa was the same thing as aew there's some smart guys experienced guys there in aew he's not listening to there are smart guys because he had jim Cornette at one point billy corgan did billy corgan's money's at stake and he thinks his vision on pro wrestling will be successful and he wouldn't listen he don't want a booker not the way I would do it. And if I'm the booker, I'm the booker. And that's just the way it is. I appreciate those nice words before. And another thing, and I don't think the fans of today uh, understand that. So when do you think the, the NWA was relevant? What year? When the NWA world champion meant something the last year it was relevant probably 90 maybe um uh, who was the guy that had it after uh after uh a flare left and went they went wcw and they created their own championship and all that stuff but there was a guy that was around and i can see his face and i can't call his name but he held the belt for like 10 years and he and he was really a good wrestler but was working smaller shows in smaller towns because the nwa became a smaller a small town also ran, I guess you might say. You, you know, I don't know who you're talking about. I Dan, uh, Dan, Dan, Severin. Dan Severin. Dan Severin. Dan Severin, yeah. Dan Severin. Yeah, because- yeah Jeff, when Jeff and them bought it, they, they took the belt off him. And let's clarify that about, Pat, about Jeff buying it, because that's not what happened. Okay. That was That was still... That was still doing an era where there was NWA members. Now, affiliations. Affiliations, and they would pay booking fees, and they would pay pay that. And so uh, Jeff, when he started TNA, that was the situation. He was a, a, a member. He didn't own the company. Now, the NWA wasn't a company. It was a governing body of – lines with voting rights and all that sort of thing 44 territories or whatever it was however it was not a brand it was not a promotion it was separate promotion all over the world what the nwa is is one single promotion one single promotion now now Uh, now. yeah i'm certainly just trying there might be people out there that's watching this show that don't know that. Uh, so I'm telling something you obviously know, and Adam knows, and Pat knows, and everybody knows. But the NWA 
was a group of promoters all, all lining together. And one of the main reasons for that was to uh, create a monopoly on the business and, and can control everything. And there's some a lot of dirty deed stories going on. It was the outlaw era of wrestling. So the NWA, so look at smaller promotions uh, right now. I think everybody would agree in America right now, WWE by far is number one in recognition and revenue, all the things I wanted to throw in. And I forgot that this is unbelievable to me. The January Royal Rumble, we're, and I think it is impressive that TN, that AEW, uh, last four or five pay per views, uh, have done one million dollars in gate. Now, we are uh, in, uh, in November, January is the Royal Rumble. They've already sold seven million dollars on tickets, seven million dollars. So, if you look at the smaller, help me name them. The NWA, would you agree? Smaller. Ring of Honor is basically muddled down in TNA, AEW, and I don't understand why he spent money for that, except that he's a big thing. So Ring of Honor doesn't mean nothing. NWA doesn't have any national TV. AEW uh, obviously is there. Uh, TNA on uh, certainly uh, the Busted Open show. And, of course, this is not real right either because because Dave, Cor- Dave LaGreca is friends of Billy Corrigan. Uh, Bully Ray works there. Tony Dream- Tommy, Dreamer Tommy Dreamer works there, yes. And they're saying that's the best, most exciting wrestling uh, hour of wrestling there is. And I can't get it. I could watch it. You can pay three dollars to watch it on YouTube. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, so I can't say if it's like uh, I, I can't say. So is there anybody else of a smaller scale? The, there's a big two, and all the rest are lower, lower, lower levels. Do you agree with that statement? Absolutely. In the United States. Yes. But I think when you go to uh, abroad, when you look at Mexico and you look at J- New Japan, you've got to say AAA and you've got to say uh, New, New Japan, Japan would, right. would be up there as well. Yes. Uh, there is there's a there's another organization. Is it M I L W? It's M L W. M L W. Major League Wrestling. Because they're out there also. Yeah, they're out there. And I saw some of their earlier TVs and I'll liked them as al says randy austin idol is the nwa is in the nwa does he have a great mind for the business or is they get a great talent i would answer that by saying that i always felt austin idol had a great 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 mind for austin idol for who he can draw with who he can draw money with on who he's involved in a program with I can't answer the question if he knows the overall picture. Can you answer that, Michael? No, I I think Mike, I think you're absolutely right. I think Mike does a great job of promoting him. And and after that, everybody else is sort of, you know, falls in place. But from what and I haven't seen the show, I did see part of the championship match where uh where they put the title on uh on on uh, uh, the gentleman uh, that and I forget his name already. Uh but anyway, and it looked like it looked more classic wrestling than what we are seeing in the mass appeal stations of TBS and the affiliates with the WWE. That brings to another question to mind. And I was going to ask this last week and, and it, we got off on other things and I didn't. Jeff Jarrett is going to work for AEW and he just had a match on the pay-per-view with Sting. And the first time I think he's wrestled on a worldwide network of sorts in a while. I have a lot of respect for Jeff. He's a good friend. I think he's a great mind. He's one of the nicest people you ever want to meet. And, and, and I love his Twitter page. He has such inspirational sayings. And, right. Yeah. I love it every day. Jeff really is, is an impact on my life every day. 
But do you see him being mercenary, going to work for AEW, opportunity to make some money? He's going in for the, I think his title is uh, uh, for live events or something that he's the, the head of or something. Director, director of business development, director Bus of okay. business development. So what's what the question? Does that mean? What does that mean? What is, what is a, a director of business development mean? A and B, do you think he's just, it's an opportunity. He got an offer. He left the WWE. He got an offer with, because he and Hunter don't get along. He gets an offer from Tony and he takes Tony. Do you think he's doing it with, with the, the, the vigor and the energy that Jeff Jarrett brings with his own nature? Or do you think Jeff Jarrett will be somebody like Big Show or Arn Anderson or, or some of the other stars that, uh, that have been brought into AEW and then a blanket thrown over them? No, I, I don't think that at all. Uh, because I don't think Jeff would have agreed, agreed to do it because he has so many irons in the fire with – with everything that he does, he's making new kids. It's right there in Alabama, Conrad Thompson. He's making good money off that podcast and he's making good money off the baseball uh, team. So uh, his passion has always been, it's been a lot. And at one point it was being an executive producer and creative, but he hadn't been into that in a long time. He's big time in live event promotions, and he's going to be involved in that as AEW starts running more house shows, which I think if they can control the costs and with the Jarrett uh, in charge of the department, believe me, they'll control the costs. Good business sense. There's no doubt about it. And he's also, from ring kicking on, he has a passion on international. I think Tony... I think he will have influence. I think he will listen to Jeff about international. I think he will listen to Jeff about live events. And I think Jeff's smart enough to read the room because if one thing Jeff does better than about anybody I know, he can read a room better than anybody I know. He can read that room. So he, if I can sense and you can sense and Pat can sense and Adam can sense, that Tony's passion and is to be the booker, to be the booker of the year, to be the creative part. That's the part of wrestling that he's he is concentrating on. So I think Jeff will stay as far away from that. Now, the per what I would have done with Jeff is I would have. I think they need a stronger personality because that company's a mess. As I think, you should throw talent relations into that because he'll go get in the face. He don't care, you know. He plus he's good at working and and playing politics, but being firm. So I th I think he took the job not just for money. I might have said money earlier. That's a part of it because he has a lot of expenses. He really does, but he has other income. I think his passion is live events and international. I know that for a flat out fact. That when he talks, he gets the most excited. So that's my opinion uh, of, of trying well, to read Jeff. I, I would hope, and, and I think we're all on the same page about Tony and where his heart and his his headlines uh, lies, rather, in the booking arena, the booking area. But I think uh, Jeff Jarrett, as a head of a booking committee, with some of the people they have down there that I think are very well-versed in professional wrestling and drawing people to see and watch and be a part of and become immersed in their product, thus buying tickets for whether pay-per-view or live events or whatever. I think I would put Jeff at the head of the table with the Arn Andersons and, and, and you throw in there the, the, uh, uh Brian, uh, 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 and some of the other kids or folks that are down there, uh, even, uh, Chris Jericho and, and get their collective minds together. And I think they could write that ship right away, but I think, and, and I don't know where the, I I don't keep up with the the the, the rat sheets or n that kind of thing anymore. But 
I, I do see and hear most of the time on Twitter for things that are happening in AEW. And it just sounds like it's chaos that the, the locker room is in, in flux and, uh, talent is being run off. Uh, you mentioned Nick Aldis earlier. Uh, we were mentioning Nick. Do you think Nick Aldis is a candidate for AEW? Do you think the Briscoe brothers are a candidate for AEW? Do you think the Von Erich kids that are a tag team and look pretty good in some of the matches I've seen Kerry's uh, kids, uh, not Kerry, but Kevin's kids, do you think they are prodigies that could help and in, in inject some new life into AEW? Or is let's AEW too big, too big already? Let's Would impact you? that a little bit. No, or kind of to back up a little bit because you said so many na names so you said a lot during during that deal i th i think the fact that jeff is uh, i don't know probably if, it, if they came to him and he had control he would probably do the creative part is very good uh, has had experience of it and they need somebody experience it's tony's baby tony's money and that will never happen that will unless he happens a nervous breakdown or whatever the case that will never happen so jeff said where can i make an impact really make an impact you know, so i think we're getting our hopes up if we think there's somebody else besides tony fox going to book the thing because that's that's not going going to happen unless the the, the uh, elder mr khan says that i think if he if he feels uh, He'll just pull the plug out. If, if Tony's not there doing what he wants to do, his dream job, I think the elder con will pull the club. Now, as far as talent's concerned, Aldis could go to WWE or AEW. That, that is, is his two options. Go ahead, Pat. You're raising your hand. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what I'd like to see. I'd like to see uh, Aldis go to AEW and have have a uh, have a series of matches with Jericho and somehow have him involved with MJF. I think that'd be I would, good. I think that'd be good TV. Thank you both work. I would pay to see that. So, do you have uh, wh where do you not where he should go, Michael? But where do you think he will go? All this, yes. I think it's probably a bidding war. Uh, I, I, that's how I'm reading the, the the tea leaves. That is a bidding war before his talents between between uh, uh, AEW and the WWE and and Triple H. Uh, I think he would have better opportunity to become an impact player quicker if Tony uses him properly at AEW. Um, I, you know, the Briscoe boys, I've watched several of their tapes over the past month because Pat sort of threw it out there that they were the best tag team going. And, and I got news for you there. <laughs> I think they're great. I love yeah. their gimmick. Here, here, I let me great. Let, let me throw this in, Michael, then you can continue with your thought real quick. And this is just what I read. And I cannot say this before for sure. You know how political correct the world is. I mean, there's no, no doubt about it. You also know that on social media, uh, companies shy away from negative comments, whether it's uh, it's uh, I, I won't even whether it's race whether where uh, if it's any other like lifestyle choices that sort of thing they a major company runs away from it now just hearsay but I heard the reason that the Briscoe uh, brothers didn't go to the WWF the WWF was scared that their past would haunt them, especially one of the Briscoe brothers. Some of those quotes that he made that were horrific oh, would come back to haunt them. And I've also heard that TBS TNT has also told Tony Khan loves them. He's putting them on ROH that don't even have a TV show, but on the pay-per-views, and he's paying them. Tony Khan is paying the Briscoes to be a part of Ring of Honor, even though they don't have a TV 
or, the, or they don't have regular towns or they just do every once in a while pay-per-view. So, uh, so I think in that point, the Briscoes, uh, they just feel they can't use them. So they're too hot as for being able to, uh, to, to overcome the sins of their past is what you're saying. And I, you Pretty know, I, if it was just my decision, I would do it in a heartbeat. Absolutely what? do. But I understand what? that Tony Khan and Vince McMahon has to listen to TNT and the USA Network and Fox. I understand it. That sends to the past and people are so sensitive about that. And you can't. If it's going to piss off your broadcast partners that you need, you absolutely need, especially the WWE, a big chunk of their money coming from TV revenue, a big chunk of the money, you don't want them pissed off at you. So I understand well, that. Well, Go ahead, Pat. You want to talk? Well, it'd be the equivalent of putting New Jack on there, right? Yes. Yes. Good point. But he's dead. Well, I, yeah, that's yeah. so. Well, then what about the Von Erich brothers? I mean, is Kevin managing their career to a point where he doesn't want them to get in the mainstream until he's ready for them to get in the mainstream? You know, I don't know Kevin enough to answer that question. I've seen their work. I think they need more matches. That's the sins of the territories going away. They need to wrestle six or seven times a week, and I can say that about about a lot of people and uh al says mlw does have the von eric brothers i hadn't seen much of them they will be free agents early in 2023 do you think they are good enough to go to the wwe or AEW? i'd have to see more of their matches and listen to the promos i think they're athletic as the as they could can be, I would think, you know, the problem with AEW, they hire everybody. They have hundreds of wrestlers and so much TV time and so many people get lost in the shuffle. When you get lost in the shuffle, when you're not on TV every week, when's the last time you see, uh, see Miro, Miro or whatever his name is, the big guy. I think he's the, hurt though. There you go. That might be be it but i'm saying so many guys get lost in the shuffle they have such a big roster i would hate to freaking be in charge of 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 that mess right now you know i really would of, of trying to make wrestlers here's the thing about wrestlers the money's great at first hey that is great but the fact they just did some of them don't even wrestle every week you know they might wrestle on dynamite uh, once or twice every two months and wrestle once or twice a month on Rampage. Uh, WWE on the, you can't, you know, there's, there has to be a balance. WWE guys thinking I'm working six days a week. I want to go home. Then AEW, I can work one day a week, if that, and make almost as good a money. So yeah. well, the other part the of balance. That the other part of that is we all know that you've got to be exposed to be exposed to be great. And, and that you have to be exposed to be exposed. And so we know that, sure. but my, my point is with AEW and I know, and I don't do a lot of YouTubing and stuff like that, especially during this time of the year, but, but there's a ton of product that AEW does online that people that just consume television, like you and I and, and Pat do for the most part, don't ever see. And there's, I know hundreds of thousands of people that are just watching the AEW product on the streams, on the, on the, on the internet. Yeah. It, I think we don't even know who well, you do because you're in the media business every day, but I don't think we can grasp the fact about streaming right now. I, uh, and I'm not speaking for you, Michael, because you deal with it every day, serious right. radio streaming, all that thing. But I don't think, obviously, the WWE, I know, make a lot of money off of that, and streaming numbers are important to them. I just can't speak of that. But I do know things are changing, Lucy. Things are changing. It's a different ball game. It really is. Let me put up a point, and I'm going to relate this to radio broadcasting, especially sports broadcasting. This past weekend, well, two, let's go back two weeks ago, we played Moody. 
uh, at ARAB, and it was a NFHS, the National High School Football Game of the Week, and it was on worldwide on the web and the internet and all that stuff. And uh, we had about, I want to say we ended up with about 600 people that listened to our broadcast on Fun 92.7 of Arabian Night Football on Fun927.com or our apps. We had about 600 people on that show. This past week, again, we were at Pleasant Grove. We played the Spartans in Birmingham in the northwest part of, of the county or the, the suburbs of Birmingham. And uh, we were away. We had over a thousand listeners. And of course, it was the third round. So it was the round playing into the semifinals, going to the state championship. But we had over a thousand listeners continuous on the broadcast. And the rule of thumb is for every li- for, for every listener you have online, you have 100 listeners on the air. And and I went to a, a funeral on 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 Sunday for a, a fallen police officer, and uh, I was inundated by people in in the county. And and my phone, unless you have my number, you can't text me. But my phone had 40 text messages on it during the game, and it was just it, it was eye opening in that we talk about being on the air and and over the airwaves. But by golly, the listenership, even just to a radio broadcast online, is exponential compared to what it was five years ago. And certainly worlds apart from where it was in 2001 when we put our first stream on the on the on the computer system. I would like to end the show since Tales of the Territory at nine o'clock so people can watch it. So so we will continue that but i i will say this and one thing that i it was cold this past friday the last two uh, and after going all football season long to see cal play football i stayed home and they stream it on a youtube channel live and they take the radio play by play and they they stream the video and i watched it at home Uh, i could have gone i don't have a radio in my house you know, I can go to the app and get it there, or I can go out in the car and get it there. But I watched the live YouTube feed on the Blazer News Network and stayed home. I pulled my chair up to the TV where I could see, and I could see it a million times better. Plus, hear it, the, the play-by-play by Randy Myers. It was fascinating. It was fascinating. And I watched after we went off the air last night, I watched Cal play basketball. But they got beat out of uh, the playoffs in football, so he was playing basketball last night, two day, three days after the season ended. And that's a neat thing. So, Michael, in just about 30 seconds real quick, because i got to wrap this, this up. Uh, so does any of your stations do that as well? Absolutely. Stream vi- all of them. video all of them. video. Yes. Uh, a local cable system actually has the different games that we carry Austin high school, uh, Arab high school, five high school, who, by the way, still in the playoffs. And then in Tennessee, we do the same thing with Trialsdale County. So yes. And we've been doing that. We've been doing that marriage with the cable television and, and now streaming for the last 28, 20 or 25 years in this market. So yes, we and we were one of the early ones that jumped onto that platform. It's but, fantastic. And, and I'm just I'm just saying though that wrestling fans are getting as much I guess uh, as much enjoyment or as much satisfaction out of watching AEW's product on on the streams as they are on TV. So the TV ratings may be at 800,000 people, but I'll bet you there's another 3 million on the on the streams that nobody's talking about. And, and 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 again, that's got to be part of their that's got to be part of their game plan. Are they generating revenue off that? I'm sure some way that they I are. I would I would think so, but yeah. I can't tell you that. I know with I, us on our streams alone, we do not generate our streams are another way of carrying our radio programming. Period. Right. Right. And, and when we sell advertising, the advertising that gets over the air gets over the stream. Right. Not, yeah, that's beneficial. But we don't sell them separately. Right, I get I get that real quick as we wrap this sucker up. It's Thanksgiving Thursday. Real quick, Thanksgiving words and final comments from you, Pat. Then we'll go to Adam, and then we'll go uh, Michael. Then I'll wrap it up. 
Well, I, I don't have much to say, and I know we, we're trying to get off, but I just, you know, one thing I do want to say at Thanksgiving is how thankful I am to be a member of, of this community with everybody, with all our friends, and I couldn't couldn't name couldn't name all of them, but I hope you all know who you are that are here, you know, most weeks or when you can, and, and it means a lot to me. Uh, it means a lot to me to be able to be here. It's it's the highlight of my week, and I am thankful for each and every one of you, and Randy and Michael and Adam and, and all our friends. Well, we appreciate it very much, certainly, Pat, everything you do for this program, and it's just absolutely just tremendous, absolutely tremendous. How about your thoughts, your final thoughts? And tell me this, as I look at my chat on the right, and it had gone away again. We had that problem once before, but I got it back here. Final words about this show and and uh, and nice words to the people about their Thanksgiving coming up. Adam Dunn. Well, that's Michael St. John when I pitched to Adam Dunn. So does that mean that Adam does not want to come on and give his – final thoughts I can I do not know because I was pitching I to him I, I didn't have myself punched up on the screen at all let me get over to me so okay sorry, um, so, final so, thoughts yeah so final thoughts so yeah happy Thanksgiving to everyone uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be traveling as I will myself I'll be going to Memphis so just everyone safe travels on that and hope everyone uh, enjoys time with their family if they're able to and uh like uh brandy was saying uh, we kind of have like our own little family here too so just from all of us here to everyone there watching we hope you have a good prosperous prosperous and happy thanksgiving very good now you know both of you guys pat and and uh, very supportive and adam production everybody compliments the production and he does an unbelievable jobs big thanksgiving joshua will be in the house and having fun and everything will be good final words briefly michael st john and we appreciate and love you as well well god love you randy you know you and i are very close and i've got a great relationship with pat and adam and coach and like like it was uh, that pat just said we're a family and and to celebrate thanksgiving with your family is a like thanksgiving this is an early thanksgiving for me tonight on this radio program but uh on this uh this uh, podcast but i just want to say to all of our uh, uh to all of our folks that are viewers and everybody that listens god bless you have a happy thanksgiving i hope everybody gets to spend it with family and friends and to randy and to, to our crew here uh love each and every one of you and i'm just honored 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 to be a part of this and thank you very much for allowing me to do so appreciate it very much and we'll do it next tuesday night adam i told you last night and you got quickly got al's comment off the screen quickly got it off the screen and i quickly put it back in randy lol adam has a vo voodoo doll of your new car sticking pins in it so Explain yourself, young man. No, I mean, why is everybody mad? You you had transmission problems. You asked the guy whose dad was the transmission uh, sponsor of wrestling what was wrong with your car, and I told you it was probably the transmission, and I was right. So, <laughs> But why would Al be saying, Budo, he's saying you're jinxing me. Hey, well, look at Michael. Look at Michael. What's he doing? What's Michael doing? I thought he's pulling a gun it's on. on me. It's on. It's well, on. Well, we got it. We got to get it's out of here. I think Adam. I think Michael. I think Pat Trammell. Yeah. Everybody watch Tiles Tales of the Territory. I got to get up early in the morning. Thanks everybody. Appreciate it very much for all you that support this show. Appreciate it very good. The Randall Hales channel on YouTube. Check that out. And Adam will figure that out. Maybe after this show ends, when we're doing our post production meeting, we'll figure that out randall hales i need you to subscribe i need you to like i need you to be able to go back if you miss a show and you can do that now all the monday and tuesday shows were up there happy thanksgiving everybody be safe eat good and the four of us we are out
God bless. Talk to y'all. Memphis Wrestling with Randy Hill, featuring Michael St. John, Pat Tremble, and special guests.